हिंदी में एक कहावत है जब चने थे तो दांत नहीं थे अब दांत है चने नहीं है दांत आगे तो चने नहीं है तो वेन यू रियलाइज दैट वॉट एवर यूर डूइंग इफ देव देर इज अ बेट ऑफ ट्रेनिंग बी आइंड इट विल हेल्प यू इट्स टू लेट बिकॉज हाफ द टाइम यूर चेज यूर ओन टेन Hello and welcome to the Nails and Hammers podcast. Nails and Hammers is a podcast series where we talk to different people about their journeys and try to understand how they solve problems in their day-to-day lives. Our guest for today is Himanshu Joshi, who is a filmographer, poet, photographer, and is also the lead vocalist of India's oldest and most popular fusion rock band, Indian Ocean. In this episode, we talk about Himanshu's early days. how he cracked into the media industry and his adventure with the indian ocean please like share and subscribe to nails and hammers on the platform of your choice and share your views in the comment section below hi himanshu welcome to the nails and hammers podcast hi i love the name is the Can hammer you? yours and the nails yours and we are the wall or <laughs> how is it how does it work <laughs> when the concept is that i, I i'm going to hammer all the guests who come on the on the podcast <laughs> All right. Yeah. So I wanted to start from the very beginning. Can you share a bit with us about where did you grow up and where all did you study? Well, I uh, was born and brought up in a place called Jamia Millia Islamia. Uh, my father was a professor there, and I did my schooling from Delhi Public School, uh, Matra Road, which was the first branch at that particular point of time, the founding branch. Then after I went to Delhi University, did my Honors in physics from Ramjas College. Then I joined Jamia Mass Communication Research Center to do my masters in communication. How did you get influenced into music? My family is a musical family. Also, was a musical family. Both my parents, my father and my mother used to sing. My uncle is um, is probably one of the most renowned musicians from Kumau region to where we belong. Music has been uh, part of growing up, and uh, influences have been there. I was listening to all kinds of music. I was influenced into folk music by my uncle. My father used to hear a lot of old rock and roll bands, so I heard a lot of that. I hear a lot of folk music from all over India. I've I sing in quite a few uh, languages. In fact, this all came about because of my um, interest in folk music. Um, I might not be able to speak those languages, but I, yeah, I know their their music. The influences are far and varied. I being the fact that i grew up in jamia i was very much influenced by uh, urdu poetry sheer o shayari i ended up listening to a lot of ghazals mere sin sahab is my hot favorite i sing a lot of him and i've read a lot of urdu shayari and uh, poetry and i'm influenced by that and film music yeah i mean obviously mm-hmm. who has it we all grew up with bollywood i hate that term but anyway <laughs> uh, hindi film industry i would say Mm-hmm. um and i'm also influenced by the regional film industry and i listen to a lot of uh, in fact the marathi uh, tradition is, is, is something that i'm i'm in awe of be it abhangwani be it uh, their theater music there are some fantastic uh, musicians from there and, and i listen to a lot of that my current favorites are ajay atul uh, so mm-hmm. that's that's what i do i mean i uh, i i i just music for me i mean if something is pretty hits my ears i love it i mean i i get influenced by bands like tenarivan and uh, lakho taifa and you know mm-hmm. people may may not have heard their names but they are these uh, huge huge influences in my life as well mm-hmm. so what did you want to be when you grew up when you were growing up growing up yeah okay uh, when i was a small child i wanted to be rajesh khanna i grew up a little more and i wanted to be amitabh bachchan so mm-hmm. I, i don't know what i wanted to be when i was really little i was influenced by trains so i wanted to be a train conductor i thought that journey was special you must mm-hmm. have seen that little uh, in those old trains there used to be that conductor's box i thought that was really cool i mean it's one of the coolest things ever remember that little lantern that green mm-hmm. lantern and the red lantern and and i used to think i mean what a cool job that would be you know then uh, growing up i also wanted to be astrophysicist I never came about uh, never realized that involves a lot of work reading up understanding physics which i didn't have either the brains or the patience to do so mm-hmm. uh went into finance and yeah i mean 
career happened by accident and choice both a friend of mine when i was doing my uh, finishing my graduation he took me around mass communication jamia it just happened i had no intention of joining it and i suddenly no. saw the gadgets i saw the camera i saw the edit units and you know you had those uh, at that time you had bolix and ariflex bl put up on stands and i i thought this is the coolest place to be in man Mm-hmm. um gave the exam i was lucky i got through and uh, yeah i mean it's it's been a long journey but very very fruitful i've mm-hmm. done some good work and which i'm very very proud of and um, as far as music is concerned indian ocean happened by by chance i never intended to be part of that band very fond of them because they were one of the bandmates uh, is kind of my contemporary in college but um it happened because of an unfortunate accident they lost their lead singer tabla mm-hmm. player ashim chakravarti some 10 years back due to uh, hemorrhage and a, a stroke and that's when i came in and been with them ever since been 10 years of amazing roller coaster ride and i love every moment of it want to get back to it want to get back to stage but let's see when it happens yep. as an outsider how did you break into the media industry you see when i started we were lucky because it was a large playing field with few players today it's the same playing field with just too many players the only career choice i mean i'm talking about 1984 mm-hmm. the only career choice i had was either join doordarshan mm-hmm. post coming out of jamia which i didn't want to and uh, or to join a private agency which i wanted to because i wanted to see something different the big bad world was something that i was not ready for because uh, jamia was like this swank king garage with amazing tools and suddenly you were out there in the market with grime and grease and dust and well the acceptance was uh, not there and uh, here we were trained mm-hmm. people it was a pioneering institution at that time it's pretty old yeah. now and uh, there was a lot of resistance from the people who had learned the tricks mm-hmm. while being in trade yeah gradually got accepted in it and i came back to jamia i taught for a year i was a producer there then news track happened and uh, mm-hmm. i had a fantastic mentor and a guide both me and my partner couple a person called vinod dua yeah uh, vinod dua has been a friend because um, he used to do a program called aapke liye mm-hmm. uh, long back it was one of the most amazing programs on doordarshan and i featured in the program as a young mm-hmm. talent a couple of times and we became friends so he got to know that i was uh, doing this i was into media now and um, he invited me to be part of the team where news track was a new video magazine that was happening mm-hmm. and that probably was one of the big steps i took i resigned my job in jamia must to the dislike and consternation of my dad who said government ka job hai itna badhiya job hai you are a lecturer and you are leaving it and you know think of the hard days ahead you know being a freelancer is not a great yep. thing i said no no i'm not being a freelancer but i became a freelancer after mm-hmm. i uh, joined news track i was with them uh, through about a year year and a half then decided to become a freelancer mm-hmm. which um, according to my dad was uh, a glorified unemployment and i haven't looked back ever since uh, both me and couple we did some interesting project and we were helped every moment every step mm-hmm. of the way by this amazing mentor that we had you know who um, when we had left our jobs and i had a very 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 well paying job mm-hmm. you know, from india today and uh, he said come here i'm looking here so he said uh, i'm doing a series on nehru in prison mm-hmm. with mj um, they had teamed up at that time and uh, would you like to take it up as director and editors both of us actually are trained editors and i think um, it's it's um, easier being um, a director when you're an editor mm-hmm. because you know exactly what you want yeah so uh, we were two at that time hot shot editors in in, in delhi mm-hmm. so we ended up doing that series and then somehow things just kept on happening and um, we are more than 30 years old we have done corporate films documentaries chat shows game shows you name it mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. we have long checkered record and uh, it's been a good going so i i have actually balanced two careers i have i run a film company with this friend of mine who has been an amazing support because 
there are times most times i'm out i mean mm-hmm. um, six months a year i'm traveling with the band oh. and uh, that is the time when if there is any work i the band has been very accommodative as well because um, that was my condition with them that i don't want to let go of what i was doing earlier mm-hmm. because filmmaking is something that i'm very very passionate about and i love it mm-hmm. um so they said no you don't have to leave it so what happens is that when something is happening i i give them a due warning mm-hmm. that this is the time period where i might be out you know for a week 10 day or whatever mm-hmm. and fortunately it kind of worked out very well the balance the balancing act is tricky but it's worked out usually the lean period of the band comes <clears throat> around march post march mm-hmm. and that is the time when the corporate film world starts waking oh. up to get the films done because it's a closing time they have fun, funds mm-hmm. and budgets etc so it's it's worked out and i uh, and i do that i do documentaries i do documentation work a lot oh. um, so uh, that has been my passion and these are long term uh, assignments mm-hmm. right now i'm doing something very interesting unfortunately the breaks have been put because of covid i'm documenting ramayan oh and influences in in this part of the world mm-hmm. which is something that has not been done people have done bits and pieces of it i'm trying to see how much of a footprint it had and uh, it's, it's a fun journey i've done about one year of documentation of that and this year i was doing the more and the third year would have been something more but mm-hmm. let's see when this uh, thing gets over then uh, and hopefully we'll come back to normal mm-hmm. and not this new normal as they say yeah. um, i'll 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 plan it out and i'll go ahead mm-hmm. as a creative person does making corporate films bore you no not at all mm-hmm. see there is you said bore right yeah it's a challenge every time because uh, when you're talking about corporate film making there are serious amounts of risks involved the corporate decides on the message they want to give mm-hmm. and they give us i worked with a company called maruti suzuki india limited for many many years now and uh, over years there's a very interesting equation that we have developed we have made films for them motivational films for them which don't mention maruti suzuki's name ever oh. you know subtle messaging is what we specialize in when there are hardcore product oriented films obviously you show the product you build up the product and you build up a storyline and plus this kind of corporate film making is done under immense pressure they mm-hmm. every client wants the film as of yesterday yeah okay so everything is so time bound in fact it's crushed time bound mm-hmm. that that's when your planning comes into form mm-hmm. documentary film making is something that you enjoy doing because it's it's i, I won't say it's laid back but yeah it is spread over a little time mm-hmm. where you have breathing space corporate film making is like a 100 meter dash but you have to be better than usain bolt and every time they say that okay you set a benchmark last year we want a new benchmark mm-hmm. to find that new benchmark becomes a challenge for you because you're challenging yourself mm-hmm. i would say it's it's very tough it's very challenging copy film making is not easy i mean people think that special effects and uh, great graphics can work miracles they don't mm-hmm. it's the storyline that you develop yep essentially i have realized one thing over years that if you're a good storyteller mm-hmm. half the battle is won now i want to talk mm-hmm. about uh, your indian ocean experience a bit so how was yeah. it like from being a a musician trained in classical music to joining a progressive rock band first of all i am not a trained classical musician in the trained classical musician sense because mm-hmm. my training has been very very sporadic and erratic Mm-hmm. when i was a child obviously there was music in the house and my parents put me through it mm-hmm. uh, there used to be uh, a very famous rampur seswan gharana ustad his name is ishtiaq sen khasa very sweet gentleman but extremely old mm-hmm. and with amazing amount of patience but his retention time towards his students was very little so i would be singing screaming my head off and he would be dozing off that kind of put me off the teaching of music you know in in your formative years unless and until you are put on the right track right from the beginning and if you and if you get a good teacher mm-hmm. your interest develops it's it's any discipline and if you have a good teacher he kind of lights that 
hunger inside you mm-hmm. that thing wasn't there as far as i was concerned so formative years i lost out one okay two that is a time when you are more interested in playing cricket football yeah. being outdoors and you know keep being tied down your friends are more important at that particular point of time because that is a time when you need to do everything possible from climbing trees to flying yeah. kites to whatever so school took half the time by the evening when you're through with your games and sports and running around etc 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 you're too tired yeah. to even think logically because most classical trained musicians have either been lucky that they have found a great teacher or they were born in families with classical musicians who woke them up every morning to do a 2 hour of riyaz and then go to school come back to the riyaz again and you know whatever that wasn't there as they my father used to say um hindi mein ek kahawat hai jab chane the to daant nahi the ab daant hai chane nahi hai mm-hmm. daant aage to chane nahi hai to when you realize that whatever you're doing if there there is a bit of training behind it it will mm-hmm. help you it's 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 too late because half the time you're chasing your own tail mm-hmm. you are doing a job or work my classical training has been sporadic so i was i was lucky i found people who kind of gave me a direction later mm-hmm. and said self study and mm-hmm. self discipline as far as music is concerned is very important and i was already into folk music i used, i used to sing ghazals etc etc i had a decent enough voice so i could manage things which people take time managing i mean i could mm-hmm. do it immediately now indian ocean happened and um, indian ocean gives you the latitude the band you know we have the way we do music is we we get this freedom to do what we want to do mm-hmm. because the sound is not bound by parameters yehi chahiye yep. we had the sound earlier mm-hmm. and the sound will continue come hell or high water you have to sing the way oshim used to sing no not like yeah. that so i mean if, if you look at any of the international bands you know there has been an evolution of sorts because most bands went through changes mm-hmm. people left people dropped out people joined in mm-hmm. but the sound continued there are some bands who faltered and the sound dropped their quality dropped indian ocean i think we have kind of rediscovered a new sound mm-hmm. keeping the old the old members amit and rahul are there yep. so their style of singing their style of delivery is there mm-hmm. now if that is there then that old sound or that old kind of a edifice is still around mm-hmm. yeah but they are also evolving with time everybody evolves or changes and i think the only constant in the life is change so while you're changing the new members when they come in they bring in their own sound or their own likes and dislikes their own influences to him got his influences as far as serious amount of classical tabla playing is concerned he's a he's a trained tabla player mm-hmm. sushmit so left nikhil came in the guitarist he brought in his own i mean he's he's not a trained guitarist but he's a fantastic musician because he's a self taught musician who plays jazz carnatic rock and roll you name it he can mm-hmm. play anything hindustani mm-hmm. classical carnatic classical he's a self taught person he's disciplined and he constantly works on himself mm-hmm. i have brought in a certain style of singing a certain kind of singing which has been liked it took a little time for people to except me yeah. post post question mm-hmm. because and i've had these people asking me this very very generalized question how do you plan to fill in his shoes you know yeah. it's it's a question that i think it's asked by everybody who tries to come in into the place of one stalwart who had left so my simple answer is he wore size 11 i we are size 8 so you know i yeah. don't fit into his shoes i fit into mm-hmm. mine and now i think over years people have accepted the new sound of indian ocean and um, i try and bring in whatever flavor i can bring in from my side in fact if you haven't heard a new number please do people might turn around and say that you are you know you're you're ripping a number from nusrat adil khan sahab it's it's not the case yeah. we were asked by times music to do our version of nusrat adil khan sahab it was like a tribute 
Mm-hmm. I cannot be Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan. Nobody can. Yeah. He's too great a musician to to copy. But this is our version of it, and we have taken Khawali to a, a completely new dimension because we brought in our own take on it. I mean, we played this on. It's been about three, three and a half years mm-hmm. um, since we started playing it on stage. Mm-hmm. We, re- we have released it later, yeah, because it's the thirtieth year of Indian Ocean, and there were a lot of plans, but COVID kind of destroyed everything. So we played it on on various platforms to various audiences, and. it's it's received uh, brilliantly i mean i uh, there's a tremendous response from the audience and it's one of the now one of the benchmark songs of indian ocean oh. and i'm very proud of it so usually bands are a close group of people when you joined you were an outsider so was it difficult to fit in not really because you see you also must realize that indian ocean one and you rahul mm-hmm. so familiarity was there i mean i i was familiar with him as far as amit and uh, sushmita are concerned and tuhin came in later so tuhin was also a new one and they're very friendly people i mean they're very nice people so mm-hmm. when i went and i joined in the notion it was i was very well prepared with whatever mm-hmm. had to be done i i worked on it for 15 days all the compositions i sat down analyzed all of them and i belted it out immediately i mean there was no they didn't have to kind of stop mm-hmm. for me and they were mildly surprised they were taken by surprise i had this cheat sheet which i used to carry it was oh. my linus's blanket for a very mm-hmm. long time uh in fact it was difficult for me to throw it out so our manager dhruv kind of stole it and oh. hid it from me <laughs> mm-hmm. he threw out threw out my linus's blanket and yeah i mean I haven't looked back since then. I, uh, it was very comfortable. They were comfortable with me. I was comfortable with them. And I think it's it's also maturity mm-hmm. because I'm not joining at a time when everybody is 28, 29, where there are fights and egos. Yeah. And I joined in when I was 45, and uh, it's, it's it's time when you've anyway finished half your life. And so there's a sense of maturity there anyway. Mm-hmm. So how do you come up with a new composition and figure out what works and what does not? so how it happens is very very interesting so we have a practice pad and mm-hmm. you get a tune in your head mm-hmm. and you start singing it humming it out or nikhil has some riff that he starts playing mm-hmm. and then slowly and steadily we develop on it on somebody's work somebody's you know riff or the tune and the song starts taking shape now mm-hmm. the thing is that as rahul has said long time back uh, to some interview he says wo ek pakoda nahi ki tal ke nikal de you know it, it yeah. takes time making it. i might like something mm-hmm. rahul might not like it rahul yeah. might like something or amit might not like it mm-hmm. or amit might like something nobody else likes so it's 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 a kind of a very open a uh, level playing field where we put in our ideas mm-hmm. and if the idea gels with everyone that becomes a composition and it takes time developing it so this is something that when we are making our own but when we are commissioned something the words come in first the lyrics come in first otherwise mm-hmm. most times the lyrics are written later the tune okay. comes in first and we we prepare a structure and then fit in the lyrics there and we have people who are fantastic uh, poets and great writers and so they they come in and uh, chip in with their uh, what they think is right mm-hmm. and that's how the song develops and um, each of us comes out with a tune so mm-hmm. you have Three, four, five tunes uh, in front of you, oh. and then we decide which is working the best, mm-hmm. and then we develop that. Okay, so it's it's a complete band band collective affair. It's, it's mm-hmm. not like an individual comes in with ki yehi hoga and. So Indian Ocean, like you mentioned, has been around for three decades. So what keeps the band going? The biggest thing that keeps the band going is what we make is is something that we we love first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know we don't go for genres we won't mm-hmm. say ki aaj sufiana karte hain yep. today's trend is sufiana today's something something is something whatever it is so mm-hmm. we we make music to keep ourselves happy mm-hmm. and when we are happy there is a vibe that is a happy vibe yep. and what comes out of it gives us immense happiness and pride and then we present it on various forums and the biggest thing is that 
we have never run after achieving something because that thing is achievable you get the point it's not that today we have to make five compositions because tomorrow we want to come in the guinness book of world record that in one day they made five compositions no we don't want to do that that's not what we do we do something in which we believe in and i think it's it's true for most bands plus as i told you lots of bands disappear after a great initial start because either you have super inflated egos you can't get along with each other mm-hmm. artists are any which temperamental in nature so you know you you have to take that into account yep. two is that you need to put in time there's a lot of effort that goes into making something mm-hmm. you need to devote time it is not mm-hmm. something that is one man's or one person's creation if it's a band and then the everybody's a hanger on that's that's not the case with indian ocean mm-hmm. so there's a there's a lot of ownership that you have as far as a band is concerned now when that happens i think the longevity of the band comes to play speaking of you know a collective effort uh, how can one maintain their individual identity when they are part of a group you anyway have your individual identity you see mm-hmm. you are either a bassist or a lead guitarist or a drummer or a singer or a percussionist mm-hmm. you have your individual identity you have your individual place you have mm-hmm. your sound which comes through it's not that one person is dominating or domineering enough to have a control that this is what it is mm-hmm. fine i mean if there is a superlative guitarist for example he might steal the thunder every time yeah like for example i would say that rahul is the face of the band mm-hmm. because he's the one who conducts the entire show he's yeah. the one who introduces the entire show he has that flamboyance he has that bohemian great look on stage mm-hmm. or the presence on stage the way he speaks the way he sings the way he moves around but it's all natural it's him mm-hmm. it's not something which is put on yeah so should we be angry about it that he's stealing this uh, that part of the thunder no mm-hmm. what he's doing is for the band this this is i think a very important part of the band that there has to be an honesty in, a, in your approach one you keep your egos aside two and think of longevity think of jo kaha jata hai na hindi mein ki lambi race ka ghoda banna hai to lambi race ka ghoda banna socho mm-hmm. you can't be a, a fast sprinter and after 100 uh, meter dash you are just gone down up and about you know? don't do that mm-hmm. you know you want you i i have i've seen that in youngsters i've we've interacted with all of them they always have this thing in mind that how can i be famous yeah you have to be started it's good to dream it's good to think that you will be famous one day but mm-hmm. at least work towards it yeah and that's when the question of longevity comes in and that's when the honesty of thinking comes in mm-hmm. that you're doing something that you want to do and not want to do something that will give you 5000 rupees in 3 days and 10000 rupees in in 4 days and maybe a place in hollywood music in in a week mm-hmm. no that doesn't work yeah. um, i mean that's what our thinking is and that's why maybe that's why indian ocean is what indian ocean is today Mm-hmm. We don't think in terms of small goals, not at all. <laughs> yeah. uh, secondly, today everyone downloads music for free or watches them for free on YouTube. So, yeah. what are what are your thoughts on that? That's the world today. Indian Ocean gives out its music free. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, you're going to download it. At least download a good version. <laughs> don't pirate it. Uh, so, I think our biggest connect is. with our audience uh, during live shows I mean, that's what i we miss most mm-hmm. for most bands i think that that's the biggest high it's it's like um, the music opium that you take when you're mm-hmm. there on stage it's 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 fantastic and let people download music i mean how does it matter and that i think has broken the hegemony of most music uh, big labels mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. now you can upload your own music you can Yeah. make more people listen to it without being waiting outside on the benches for 
some in our manager to listen to you mm-hmm. when you're carrying your CD. We, Indian Ocean has done that. And there are lots of songs that we sing on stage, but they are not ours technically in terms of mm-hmm. they're produced by Times mm-hmm. Music, so it belongs to them. Oh. Tomorrow we want to do something with them. We have to ask their permission to do our oh. songs. So it's yeah. like when you're when you're uploading your own song and you're giving it out free, it still is your baby at the end of yeah. the day. I now want to shift focus to know more about Himanshu as a person. So, what's your biggest failure so far? Ha! Ah, my biggest failure is I'm too bloody lazy. I mean, I I could have done a lot more with my life if I was a little more pumped up, as I see the youngsters today. I take time to take decisions. I, but I don't know. I have turned my failures into success. Adopting this particular unconventional method. I don't know what my failures are. Truthfully, I'm I'm too naive. I'm um, I believe in everybody, and I've I've been cheated many times, but I don't mind it, you know, because uh, at the end, at end of the day, um, it doesn't hurt me. Uh, a follow up on the laziness uh, uh, thing that you mentioned. Do you think creative people are disorganized? See, I am very very organized. Yeah. So I don't know whether that makes me an uncreative person or a non-creative person. I have a severe OCD about being organized. Mm-hmm. I like to do things very structured and very ordered. I hate. I have a severe OCD. I I hate it when there is any amount of disorganization in my my life, my my career, the way I work things out. In fact, my bandmates often call me uh, the most organized person and the most irritating organized person they've met. Mm-hmm. because i like to do it i mean i mm-hmm. i have this problem i, I can't do without it mm-hmm. now whether that makes me uh, a non creative person i don't know this is a, yeah i mean as far as corporate films are concerned unless and until you are organized you can be the biggest failure this other swiss can mm-hmm. i mean every step in making a corporate film has to be timed to perfection mm-hmm. because you're playing with somebody else's money and it's big money when a corporate film is made mm-hmm. and uh, since we've been doing it for many many years it's it's i can do it with my eyes shut today mm-hmm. but uh, one has to be very very careful a small mm-hmm. mistake can just throw you out how do you switch off after performing on stage you know in, as far as big concerts are concerned it's like a it's like a feeling of a deflated balloon at the end of the concert because it's a long day for you because you mm-hmm. reach a particular venue you go in you normally take really early in the morning flights and we've had five or six mm-hmm. concerts at times on a trot in different cities yeah. so you're tired you rest for about an hour hour and a half go off to the venue do your sound check come back change go back again do a you know a final check and you're on stage you finish and up concerts are power packed in the emotional mm-hmm. concerts are really really power packed and the audience gives you all the energy uh, that is there and when it gets over you know you kind of just shh, it's just you just go down you know it's, it's that high continues for like 5 or 10 minutes more after the concert but after that you actually feel very tired mm-hmm. and then you calm yourself down go off bathe change sleep and off to the next location you know so that's that's our routine mm-hmm. how do you manage work life balance when you're traveling for 6 6 months a year very difficult it's a juggling act i fortunately have my wife and um, kids have been wonderful and so mm-hmm. when you have a supportive family when you have supportive friends my friend kapil patra my business partner makes things much smoother and easier for you mm-hmm. and i'm actually i mean it's it's strange but this time of being inside with the family i think i'm enjoying every moment of it. although my kids don't have time from 9:30 in the morning till about 5:30 because they both have the laptops up and they're working online but yet yeah they're there I, we are there together we distribute work and it's it's fun i think uh, we are anyway a very strongly bonded family but i think i'll ch- I, i'll cherish this this moment uh, for, for a very long long time i don't know how long it's going to continue but i really don't mind it how can one go with the flow and make things happen at the same time 
I, I always believe that whatever you do, you're sincere and you're honest. I think it bears fruit in the long run. And that is, these are the two virtues which kind of carry you forward most times. And uh, in the long run, I think uh, you come off as a better person, you come off as a better professional, you come off as a better father in my case, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, whatever I do, I, I'm i very honest with it. And I, because at the end of the day, if you're not, then you're cheating yourself. And mm -hmm. That's not being fair to others. It's not being fair to whatever you're doing. Your product suffers. You might have success because of whatever shortcuts you might have used to achieve it. But I don't think it's worth it in the long run. So what I generally do is I just take up whatever is there. Kuch bhi ho. Anything in my life, be it writing, be it photography, be it poetry, be it uh, music, be it uh, direction, be it editing, anything that I do, I do it with all my heart. I, I put in about 150% of me in, into that work. At the end of the day, at least, I am satisfied that I didn't cut any corners. And lastly, uh, what advice would you give to a 25-year-old Himanshu today? 25-year-old Himanshu... I was too bothered about trying to make a career Unfortunately, there was nothing uh, to fall back upon. And um, I was too emotionally attached to certain things and certain people. I would, I would say that some bit of detachment always works as well. Mm -hmm. And I think one has to be a little prudent in their approaches. Um, so that, that's one advice I would like to give myself if I can take the clock back. Mm -hmm. um, be a little more, I wouldn't say calculative in, in, in the approach, but yeah, I'm going to try and assess people a little better mm -hmm. than what I do even today. I mean, I, I may be giving myself an advice, but ultimately it's my heart which I follow, not my mind. And we'll end with a quick rapid fire round. Uh, either you can give a one word answer or you can elaborate it. Uh, that's up to you. Uh, who's the favorite actor that you have worked with? Uh, the three people I, I definitely would like to talk about, one is uh, Nasiruddin Shah, who was my, my first big directorial uh, work that we did. Mm -hmm. uh, he's just too fantastic. I mean, he's, uh, we, are, we, we were in awe because he would remember a page of, of his delivery, full page of dialogues, and um, just give one perfect take. That is it. Mm -hmm. uh, second person whom, who was immensely immensely talented and very, very warm was Tom Alter. I really miss that man. He's yeah. quite, a, quite a person. Uh, you won't believe it. I mean, he, he had non-actor vibes completely. I mean, he was, he was so simple in his approach. He would lift up the tripod and he lift up the monitor and start walking and he say, sir, what are you doing? He said, I used to do that. Very rare to find these kind of qualities in an, in an actor who's already established. Umpuri mm sahab. -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm immensely warm, immensely brilliant, loved working with him. And one actor who is a complete, I mean, out of everyone that we have worked with, who's an amazing actor, amazing performer, and a complete sweetheart is Bhaman Hirani. He's a person who's a great friend first. Mm -hmm. You know, you would have, you would think that you've met him like many years, for many okay. years you've known him. And he's so, so down to earth. The smallest cog in the wheel of production is the spot boy. So I still remember spot boy uh, got him a cup of tea. And he smiled and he said, thank you so much. Spot boy was taken aback. I mean, here is a man who's discussing something with us. And he has given that due, I would say that honor and thanks to mm -hmm. somebody like a spot boy. And even we in our productions treat everybody equally because we have our own, we don't have, which is there in, unfortunately there in, in most film production teams that everybody eats separately. The actors are eating separately. Yeah. So in our productions, obviously if it's Bhaman, we would say that you stay in your uh, room and we'll get you the mm -hmm. food. He stood in the line. Oh. In all of us. He stood in the line. I mean, he, he didn't jump the line. Mm -hmm. So 
you know these are sterling qualities in a human being he's a he's a very nice human being first and one of one of the finest actors you can ever come across mm-hmm. who has the worst sense of humor among the indian ocean band members yeah. <laughs> me <laughs> what's your favorite uh, indian ocean travel story oh when we went to australia and we did a actually the many but uh, that rahul uh, i and um, nikhil we took uh, we had time on our hand so we went to see the apostles we did a road journey and that was just fantastic one more road journey which i can never forget is um, rahul amit and i we we had about 3 4 days with us we went to the grand Can- we drove to the grand canyon we went to sedona and uh, i mean just amazing it's it's amazing to travel on road in the us and um, to see things in close proximity rather than just flying over yeah. the journey amit and i did from uh, we were in la from there to san francisco you know so mm-hmm. it's, uh, yeah. favorite song from indian ocean and otherwise one of my favorite songs is bore which i think is is one hell of a composition unfortunately we don't get to sing it a lot because mm-hmm. it's about 18 minutes long But the lyrics and, are amazing uh, Yeah, bore is is just. Can you imagine the bird having a Sufi experience? You know, yeah. <laughs> I hear a lot of different kinds of compositions. My my favorites change with season, as they say. I've been hearing a lot of Ajayatul lately, and I've been hearing a. Um, I'm I'm in awe of certain singers from uh, Pune. I've been hearing a lot of Abhangwani for that matter. That I hear. I mean. they could be a ghazal at one point of time or they could be so when this film bohem and rhapsody came i mean i was just here in queen for days at an end you know so it's difficult to pinpoint it's very difficult because this canvas is so huge how can you say that you you like one and two yep. like the other and lastly one uh, musician you would love to jam with who One musician I would love to jam with. One musician duo I would love to jam with is Ajay Atul. At this mm-hmm. particular point of time, again. Yeah. Um, I think they're huge. They're just far, far too good to uh, even think about the lowlies like us. I, I'm too much in awe of them. They're wonderful people, again. And um, while we are doing Tandanu, we happen to jam with a lot of fantastic musicians and. you know my wish list it just keeps on growing definitely ajay at this point mm-hmm. so we are at the end of our podcast thank you so much himanshu and i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did thank you so much